down. We made it. It's a cloudy day in Hope Town, and we're on the search for coffee. None of these say coffee. Hey, is that here? That way? No, no. Okay. It's a sign. A cup of coffee in the morning, and I get the paper. I check the headlines and decide that I am bored. I check my email and I decide to answer later. Another cup of coffee and I drag myself to work. My life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep, and work. I am not boring, I just stick to what I know. Sitting there at work and I realized I forgot to wake up I can't be productive when I'm dreaming about a sheep I go upstairs and get myself another cup of coffee I get downstairs and then I spill it on the floor well, My life is grounded in a firm routine of coffee, sleep and work I am not boring, I just stick to what I know We're in about 18 inches of water and we still have an hour till low tide. The wind shifted a little bit, which has pushed us towards a sandbar, but it's very soft here, uh, so we're not worried. Uh, and yeah, this is the first time we've actually got her this, this shallow. If there is any issue, we can just pull her forward. I'm feeling really nervous because Cat's way is grounded. It's the first time we've ever done that to her. I know rationally that everything should be okay, but it still makes me a little hoo. I don't know, we're, we're moving now. We're swinging slightly. It's very, very soft sand. The next day, our friend Joe from Barefoot Adventures came to inspect the drive leg and see if he could help. See, I don't know if you can see, if you can see that. That's lateral side to side, and even your even your end plate, you've got a little bit of. Right. Sweet. Done deal, man. Done. It's done. Okay. Unfortunately, our original diagnosis was correct, and the seals and the bearings needed replacing. With no ways to get the parts sent in a timely manner, we decided to continue with our original plan and use the drive leg very sparingly until we arrive back in the States. Right hand thread. Yeah, right hand thread. It's now in video, so we have it for posterity. We're getting an education on our drive leg. Yeah, and I don't know how this worked out, but I'm the one trying. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm a sucker>. <laughs> <laughs> Joe from Barefoot Adventures. It's been raining the last few days, so it's washing day. We have two buckets of fresh rainwater with a bit of sand in them because we sourced them from the dinghy. I'm scrubbing here, Diana's rinsing, then we're hanging them up, and there will be a further rinse later judging by the sky. Hopetown's most famous landmark is the Elbow Reef Lighthouse.
lighthouse sits atop 101 steps and stands 89 feet tall. The light is fueled by kerosene, which is kept in pressurized iron tanks. The lighthouse burns one gallon of kerosene every night. The lighthouse works without electricity, relying on hand cranking of heavy weights, which then rotate a series of bronze skiers to move the apparatus. The keeper on duty has to wind the weights every two hours. The Fresnel or Fresnel lens focuses the light towards the horizon. The entire rotating structure rests on 1200 pounds of mercury, which reduces friction and allows the apparatus to move freely. Next, we visited the Wyanee Malone Historical Museum. The Abacos were home to the Lucayan tribe, who were all removed by 1520 by the Spanish to work as slaves. The next settlers to Hopetown were the Loyalists, who arrived in 1783. These settlers made a modest living through wrecking, fishing, sponging, and shipbuilding. Wrecking was a lucrative business in Hopetown. The island is surrounded by a large barrier reef, which claimed ships at least once a month. The locals would help save lives and then salvage the wreck and make use of the supplies. The Hopetown citizens were not pleased with the plan for the lighthouse as it would put an end to the wrecking era. They went so far as to sabotage the construction of the lighthouse. First they sank the supply boat and then refused to give the workers food and water. However, the government persevered and the lighthouse was erected in 1863. On Anzac Day, which is Australian's Veterans Day, we had a dawn service. Watching the sun rise and drinking rum and coffee, a traditional digger's drink. Dan is making me Anzac biscuits. I'm excited, just have to wait. Two rows, aw oh, yeah. Here they are, our Anzac cookies. Finally managed to film it before they all got eaten up. And they're perfect. They're crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. Greg already ate half a pan. We're currently in the Chesapeake. Check out our live map, link in the description. Thanks for watching.